Okay, let's get to it. Lenses in my quiver. I used to use uh, an Nikon platform, but I have since switched over to the Sony mirrorless platform after falling in love with a little crop sensor APS-C A6000 I bought for a dive trip and have since upgraded to the Sony A7R2. So all my lenses now are for the Sony mirrorless platform. Some of them are for the APS-C sensor. Some of them are full frame, but I will explain that as I go. So talking about shooting from a moving vehicle. Yes, I do it a lot because I'm in a moving vehicle a lot. Nature of the beast, I'm sorry. At least I'm not doing my makeup in the mirror or whatever. My go-to lens for everyday use and shooting from the vehicle, this is my 24 to 105. It's a pretty awesome, just multi-purpose lens. It's a workhorse. It offers me the ability to shoot with relatively great clarity uh, from a distance away and is probably my widest range lens. This is the G Master series. It's a little more expensive. It is an F4 lens. I don't know if they make it in a 2.8. I don't really see the need for that. I do enjoy this lens. It has served me well, and this one was a good investment. No buyer's remorse there, even for the G Master series. Now, even better than the the G Master series I've found are the Zeiss lenses. Of course, I'd like Zeiss lenses because they're super fucking expensive, but they are rad. They're so clear, they're so fast. There's never an issue with Zeiss lenses. If I could afford the whole gamut of them, I would have them. I absolutely, they're awesome for any platform. This is probably my most widely used Zeiss lens. This is a 16 to 35, also an F4, but this sucker is so clear. Assuming we'll go where I would like to go in the helicopter at an altitude I'd like to be at, this is the first lens I will put on my A7R2. I absolutely love it. it takes gorgeous pictures. It is a solid lens and it was definitely worth whatever small fortune I paid for it. So, getting wider, and this is an F2, so going a little faster now. Next up, this is another Zeiss, yay. This is my 25 millimeter F2. It's a fixed prime, so you can't zoom in or out. You, know, you, get, you get what you get, you get 25 millimeters, so it's awesome for landscape, for, for wide angle photos. I, growing as a photographer, am still getting used to having a fixed prime lens. I love the ability to zoom in and out and not have to change my lens, but the clarity, the speed, everything that comes along with using a fixed prime, especially a Zeiss, is certainly growing on me. And this is also the lens I will be using most of the time when I shoot my videos for you guys. And then the widest lens I have in my quiver is my 12 millimeter. And this is, like broken on, but it's it's made by Samyang, which I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's made by Sony. It's their Japanese counterpart or whatever. I know my sunshade on here says made in, I guess it's Korean. Yeah, so this is Korean, <laughs> but it's a good lens. I have not used this one as much as I should to do it justice or to even become remotely familiar with it. I do plan on bringing it on this trip. Awesome for landscapes. And hopefully where I'm going, there's gonna be a lot of landscape to take photos of. Now I won't be using this out of the helicopter. This is a better walking around, hiking, looking around lens. Essentially in a helicopter, depending on your, your altitude, you're already gonna see what looks like the curvature of the earth. You're gonna see a you know, you've got this huge perspective and a lens like this steps you back and, and makes it seem even bigger. So if you want any sort of level of detail or you have a subject in mind, 
this is probably not what I'm gonna use. It was, it's obviously personal preference all the way, but I, unless I wanna capture a super large scale view and it can't be done with another lens, I probably won't bring this in the helicopter, at least I may if there's space, but it won't be on either of my camera bodies as a member of my starting lineup. All right, now for my faves. This is my second favorite, and I'll tell you why, of course. This is my 70 to 200 G Master. I like this lens. I like it a lot, it's convenient. It is buttery smooth with the zoom, and it's also super cool in that unlike, and I'm sure there's a technical explanation, you're not gonna get it from me. You're gonna get the Tiffany explanation. When you zoom in and out, it is so smooth, but the lens doesn't extend. And whatever reason, I don't like it when they extend, especially too far. I feel like it throws off the balance of my camera. It throws off how I'm holding it. You gotta make these adjustments, blah, blah, blah. So I like this lens. I like how it operates. The only thing I'm a little skeptical on is this comes in two different f-stops, right? It comes in f4, which this is and it comes in a 2.8. And some proponents of the 2.8 say, hands down, that's the professional yeah, lens. Eight. Some people really love it, some people swear that it makes all the difference in the world. I researched and researched and researched, and since there's more than a thousand dollar difference between the F4 and the F2.8, I really wanted to be sure that it was worth the investment. And from what I came up with, I thought the F4 was better for me for the time being. Maybe someday my photography will grace the halls of whatever fancy place pays me a lot of money to do so. But until then, I'm gonna stick with the F4. It is a good lens. It's very versatile for me, which is nice to be able to change the focal length so much between 70 and 200. I am a little bit leery once I get out near 200 millimeters. The clarity for me just isn't there. And I don't know if it's camera settings or what, or it might just be the lens. It might just be the nature of when you zoom that far out, you do lose some compression and your photos are not as sharp. But I have taken some really cool photos with this lens and I've taken some really shitty photos with this lens. The shitty part, mostly on me, but I'm still on the fence about how I feel fully zoomed out uh, shooting something at, at 200 millimeters with this. 70 to 200 millimeters, that's fine. But if you wanna be serious about what you're shooting, look at this. This is my 100 to 400. Uh, it's a f4.5 to 5.6, so I don't really have the speed or the ability to let light in like the you know f2.8s or f2s this is pretty rad it's the best i can do without spending twelve thousand dollars on a lens that i could use to shoot you know the super bowl so i'm pretty stoked on this i just got it and this will be my first trip with it this does zoom uh, unlike the 70 to 200 <laughs> is actually does get longer when you zoom out. First, I was super annoyed with it until I realized that you can go from smooth to tight. So if you loosen it up a little bit, it, it's pretty darn smooth when you go to extend it. Now that said, yesterday I was laying in a muddy field in the middle of a snowstorm trying to shoot photos of Canadian geese who did not want me to be there. And trying to really, really zoom out with those guys, it, again, like I said earlier, I feel like this throws off the balance of my whole setup. This is almost better suited for staying stationary and shooting from a tripod, which I wasn't doing. That's why, if you can see, I'm a little bit muddy everywhere. Everything needs cleaned. But I wasn't impressed with the quality of my shots after I got about to 300 millimeters. It just seemed blurry. I don't know. I think it's just gonna take time on target with this. We need to work on our relationship and get a little more familiar with one another. And maybe we can establish that symbiosis required. So, I still need to think about it, 
but I may bring this in a helicopter. What I do if I have something that's heavy, obviously you can't have a tripod in a helicopter. I mean, if you can, I don't know what kind of helicopter you're flying in. Not the same one that I am. So what I tend to do if I have a heavier or a bigger lens and I'm flying is, I'll show you. I gotta be careful if my door's off because even if you're moving relatively slowly in the helicopter, it's just like sticking your arm out the window on the interstate, right? It's gonna get sucked back. Anything you're not holding on to tightly is gonna fly out the side of the door. That's how it works. So that said, you don't wanna even catch a portion of your lens outside of the door, although I get very close to doing so. Very tightly. But when I'm shooting and I have a heavy lens, I just bring my feet up in my seat on the helicopter and I'm gonna fall out of my fucking chair. That's what I'm gonna do. Don't do that in the helicopter. I just end up putting my knees up and balancing it on my knee. It tends to be the best solution I've come up with so far. Mind you, when I shoot out of the helicopter, oftentimes I've asked a, a friend, a pilot friend, to accompany me so I can take photos. I don't, and I haven't historically done many actual photo flights uh, where I like pay and somebody takes me to, to shoot photos. Usually it's just another pilot, a buddy who's being awesome and offers to come up, take controls for a little bit so I can shoot stuff. Generally, <laughs> it's a little different, it depends on who's flying with me, but it's not a photo flight. It's not, you know, hovering out of ground effect, going slow, blah, blah, blah. So I gotta make do with what I can with the time I'm given, and I'm just thankful to be there at all times and to be able to have access to a helicopter and buddies who are also pilots who are kind enough to fly me around and let me take pictures of things. So for Yellowstone, uh, there are, although the roads really aren't open there in the winter, there are not really flight restrictions, which is crazy to me, and I can't really find a rationale for that. It is suggested that we stay 2,000 feet above the park, which is crazy. That's also the height we do our, our emergency procedures practice from when we kill the engine and enter an auto rotation. It's generally around 2,000 feet. It gives you a lot of room to work and to fix things. And that's a pretty tall order to stay that high above the park. But that said, it is a suggestion, similar to a stop sign, right? And so 2,000 feet above ground level AGL is at this point a suggestion similar to a stop sign. So hopefully we will not have to stay that high in the air. I would like to be a lot lower. Only restriction, and this is across the board, is you can't land. Obviously you can't land in a national park barring exigent circumstances. But even with private property, we can't just roll up and, and land wherever we want to. We've got to get permission from the landowner. So when I fly to get breakfast burritos from Sonic, the place where I land is an adjacent parking lot. We have permission from the property owner to park there. And the R44 fits really cutely in the parking spaces. So won't be landing, but also not regulated to altitude. It will be terrain, climate, everything dependent. So that is a long-winded way of saying, I don't know if me and my new boyfriend are gonna shoot from the heli or not. I would prefer not to have to extend out to 400 millimeters, just for clarity's sake. But I can assure you that it will be in my bag and it will be available to me should I feel like I need it.